the Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I very much appreciate the opportunity to participate in the debate on S219 today, the Journey to Freedom Day bill. I very much believe that this is a very important piece of legislation regarding a period in history that was a great tragedy for the people of Vietnam. However, it also serves as a recognition of an event in which all Canadians should be proud. On April 30th, 1979, uh, 75, pardon me, when Sagan fell to the North Vietnamese Army, it set off a mass exodus of people, many of whom Secret had only one incident. Work on terror! Work on freedom! Secret work! 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 The uh, House will suspend for one, one moment. Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Tobacco Centre. Well, oh, okay. Turning right on, Mr. Speaker. Uh, wow. Okay. Huh. On, on April 30th, 1979, when Saigon fell to North Vietnamese Army, it did set off a very a massive exodus of people, many of whom had only one means of escape on the water. And it was the beginning of a journey that would be fraught with peril and tragedy for millions. In the first few years that followed, a few thousand made their escape from the communist regime, but by 1978 to 1979, these Vietnamese refugees were fleeing from their homeland by the tens of thousands. They arrived in a number of neighboring countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Their plight created a massive humanitarian crisis across Southeast Asia as many refugees left in overcrowded boats that were, in many cases, unfit to withstand the harsh conditions of the stormy seas. More than a quarter of a million perished. Some died from illness, some were victims of pirates and kidnappers. It was, by all accounts, a nightmare for all involved. An influx of so many refugees to those countries was more than they could handle. The boat people, as they became known at the time, were sometimes turned away. If they were allowed to land, they were not allowed to integrate into those countries, which led to the creation of several squalid refugee camps. <laughs> This vast humanitarian crisis required action on a global scale, and the world responded. So, Mr. Speaker, with the aid of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, government officials in each country began the process of resettling the refugees in a number of developed countries, including the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Australia, the United States, and, of course, Canada. Canada played a significant role in aiding tens of thousands of refugee after the fall, refugees rather, after the fall of Saigon. During the humanitarian disaster that followed, Canadians rallied to offer whatever assistance they could. We ultimately brought more than 60,000 Vietnamese refugees here to settle and build new lives across our great country. It is estimated that 34,000 were sponsored by Canadian families, Canadian charities, religious groups and non-governmental organizations, while another 26,000, Mr. Speaker, were assisted by the Canadian government. The arrival and resettlement of the Vietnamese refugees in Canada is a shining example of how Canadians responded to a global calamity. Canada's compassionate response included families, church groups, and community organizations who took the refugees into their homes, helped them find a place to live, to find employment, and get their kids into school. This exemplary moment in Canada's history of humanitarian protection was a contributing factor to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees awarding its Nansen Refugee Award to the people of Canada in 1986. And it was the first and only time that this prestigious medal was awarded to an entire nation. Canada was forever changed and enhanced by the events following the fall of Saigon and the exodus of the Vietnamese refugees, not just demographically and culturally. 
In addition to the development of a strong and vital Vietnamese Canadian communities thriving in many cities across Canada, the Government of Canada enshrined its private partnerships of refugees programs in a fundamental part of Canada's refugee and humanitarian resettlement program. The community and church groups that sponsor refugees to come to Canada continue their compassionate work today to the betterment of Canada, refugees and their families from around the world. Mr. Speaker, this bill would designate April 30th as Journey to Freedom Day in Canada and it would honour our Vietnamese Canadian population by showing our support to a community which has flourished in this country economically, culturally and socially. The Vietnamese community in Canada have demonstrated their loyalty and their love of Canada. We are building on a tradition of commemoration well established in communities of displaced Vietnamese people from across the globe. It would also be a significant day for all Canadians many of whom united in the mid to late 1970s in the face of a humanitarian catastrophe to welcome more than 60,000 Vietnamese refugees to a new land, a place to call home. It was an inspiring time as the Government of Canada and the people of Canada exhibited their humanitarian spirit to the world. All Canadians deserve a day to remember, to show their considerable efforts and to show the world that we are a caring and a compassionate nation. Journey to Freedom Day would not be a legal holiday nor a judicial day, but a day that would solemnly acknowledge the events of that dark time in history with respect to the sorrows of those refugees who were lost to illness, malfeasance, or the cruelty of the turbulent sea. It would also be a day with deep sense of hope for those who became Canadians and a strong sense of pride, Mr. Speaker, for those who helped make that happen. And as it happens, Mr. Speaker, it would also serve as a fitting way to begin Asian Heritage Month, which begins the following day on May the 1st. With the passage of this bill, April 30th would be a special day of commemoration for the Vietnamese Canadian community, followed directly by a full month of reflection and celebration of the contributions of all Canadians of Asian heritage. <coughs> Canada values its relationship with the country of Vietnam, grounded in mutual respect and partnership. We look forward to building on this very key relationship into the future. We owe it to those who have become Vietnamese Canadians, however, to also acknowledge their true journey to freedom, Mr. Speaker. Today, there are more than 220,000 Vietnamese Canadians who have integrated into and enhanced this country, who contrib contribute to our growth and prosperity as vibrant members of Canadian society. The bonds that they have forged here have been deep and enduring and Canadians are rightfully proud of our role in their journey to freedom, which began almost 40 years ago. Mr. Speaker, I strongly encourage all members to join me in supporting Bill S-219. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.